I'm going to talk about two theories of cognitive development that you need to know for the ECCP. We have Piaget's constructivist theory and Vygotsky's sociocultural theory. According to Piaget, cognitive development depends on biological factors and interactions between the child and his environment. There are four universal stages that every child progresses through, although not everyone reaches the last stage. According to Piaget, the child plays an active role in his own cognitive development by interacting with the environment. That's what makes it a constructivist theory. According to Vygotsky's sociocultural theory, cognitive development is influenced by social and cultural factors. Development occurs on two levels, first an interpersonal level and then on an intrapersonal level. Let's take these theories one by one. First, Piaget's constructivist theory. Piaget argued that cognitive development was the result of equilibration, which is an innate motivation for equilibrium. Equilibrium happens when cognitive schemas match our experience of the world. When our cognitive schemas don't match, we're in a state of disequilibrium. Equilibration is restored through adaptation, which consists of two processes. Assimilation, which is when the child tries to understand a new situation using a pre-existing schema. For example, he sees a new animal that he's never seen before and labels it a dog because he doesn't have a label for that new animal. Or accommodation, which is when the child actually changes his schema based on new information. This is when the child learns that no, not everything with four legs is a dog. This is a cow. It has black and white spots and it says moo. It's a cow. So now he's accommodating or changing his schema based on this new information. You can remember this by thinking about what the word accommodation means. It means you're changing something. For example, if you go to a restaurant and you tell them you're gluten-free, they might be able to accommodate you. They're like, yeah, we don't normally make the recipe like that, but we can make some accommodations for you. When a child accommodates, they change their schema based on new information. So like I said, Piaget's theory involves four stages. From birth to age two, you have the sensory motor stage. Then from age two to seven, you have the pre-operational stage. From age seven to 12, the concrete operational stage. And ages 12 and up is the formal operational stage. There are certain core features to each stage. Some are good and some are bad. The sensory motor stage is characterized by gradual development of object permanence and representational or symbolic thought. And I'll talk more about what all these things mean in a minute. The pre-operational stage is limited by transductive reasoning and egocentrism, which result in animism and magical thinking. It's also limited by centration and irreversibility. The core features of the concrete operational stage are the development of logical reasoning and calculation, as well as conservation, which depends on the development of decentration and reversibility. The formal operational stage is characterized by the development of hypothetical deductive reasoning, as well as propositional thought. Again, not everyone reaches this stage. Let's break these stages down even more. So starting with the sensory motor stage, which is from age zero to two years. In the first month, the baby primarily displays reflexive reactions, which are innate reflexes that the baby is just born with. Between the ages of one month and four months, the baby displays primary circular reactions which happen when a baby repeats enjoyable actions that involve his own body. From four to eight months are secondary circular reactions. These occur when the baby repeats enjoyable actions that involve objects, or when a baby mimics the actions of someone else. After this, you have coordination of secondary circular reactions, which involves purposefully combining secondary reactions to achieve goals, or mimicking the unfamiliar actions of another person. Then, from 12 to 18 months, tertiary circular reactions develop. Here, the baby purposefully experiments to find new ways of accomplishing goals. Finally, from age 18 to 24 months, the baby internalizes schemas, meaning they form mental representations of how the world works, so they can problem-solve mentally. So to recap, first they have innate reflexes, then they repeat actions with their own body that were enjoyable, then they repeat actions that were enjoyable that involve objects, or they mimic the familiar actions of other people. Then they mimic unfamiliar actions of another person, or they purposefully combine secondary circular reactions to achieve goals. 
After this, they experiment with different actions in order to solve problems, and then finally, they engage in mental problem solving. So basically, the sensory motor stage from age 0 to 2 years is characterized by the development of object permanence, which is the ability to recognize that things continue to exist even when you can't see them. That's why babies think that peekaboo is so fun, because they don't realize this yet. The sensory motor stage is also characterized by the development of representational thought, which involves using mental images and words to represent people and concepts. This allows children to engage in make-believe play. The pre-operational stage from age 2 to 7 is characterized by transductive reasoning, which is when children think that two events are related just because they happen at the same time. This stage is also characterized by animism and magical thinking. Animism refers to believing that inanimate objects have characteristics of living things, like animals or people. Magical thinking is when you believe that you can cause something just because you thought about it. For example, if a little kid thinks about his mom getting hurt, and then his mom does get hurt, he might think that he caused that. That's magical thinking. Children in the pre-operational stage are egocentric, meaning they can't understand other people's perspectives. They basically think everyone has the same information that they have, and everybody sees the world the same way that they do. Some other core features of the pre-operational stage are the inability to conserve. This refers to not understanding that physical characteristics stay the same despite an object changing shape or changing appearance. For example, if you pour a glass of water from a short, fat cup into a tall, skinny glass, the child will say that there is more water because it appears that way, even though logic should tell them that it's still the same amount of water. This happens for two reasons, centration and irreversibility. Centration is the tendency to focus on one part of an object or situation. Like, yeah, that is a really tall glass. That must have more water in it. They're not focusing on any other factors other than the appearance of the glass. Irreversibility refers to the inability to understand that actions can be reversed. If they had this ability, they would be like, oh, they could just pour the water back in that fat glass and that would still be the same amount of water. But two to seven year olds don't really have this ability yet, so they can't understand that. However, 7 to 12 year olds in the concrete operational stage do have this ability. First of all, they have logical reasoning, so they can perform logical calculations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. They also have the ability to conserve, so they have decentration, they can focus on multiple aspects of a situation or an object at the same time, and they have reversibility, so they understand that actions can be reversed. You can pour the glass of water back in the same cup. Finally, we have the formal operational stage, which is from ages 12 and up, although not everyone reaches this stage. It's characterized by hypothetical deductive reasoning, which is when people can test their hypotheses to come to a conclusion. This stage is also characterized by propositional thought, which is the ability to reason logically even without having concrete examples. Unfortunately, adolescents in this stage experience a renewed egocentrism, which is the inability to understand other people's perspectives. Elkind proposed that this happens because of two things. First of all, adolescents have an imaginary audience, which is this belief that they are the focus of everyone's attention. That's why middle school is so stressful, because kids think that everyone is looking at them and judging them. And then personal fable, which is the belief that you are unique and can't be understood by other people, and also you can't be harmed, you're kind of invincible. These factors both contribute to a renewed egocentrism during adolescence. Okay, now let's talk about Vygotsky's sociocultural theory, which says that cognitive development occurs on two levels. First, on an interpersonal level. That's when other people like teachers and adults provide verbal prompts for the child. At first, the child mimics these prompts when they're completing a task alone. This is called private speech. Then, development occurs on an intrapersonal level. Inner speech develops by age 7, although adults may revert back to private speech during challenging tasks. Vygotsky said that children learn best when information is within their zone of proximal development. This is the zone in between what they can do independently and what they can do with some assistance or scaffolding. Vygotsky also argued that make-believe or symbolic play provides a natural zone of proximal development that really helps children learn. And that's all you need to know about Piaget and Vygotsky. 
For more free EPPP videos, hit like and subscribe. Happy studying! Thank you.